Hello everybody, this is God's Girl G, and thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who are repeat viewers, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe. That way you will not miss any of the videos that I upload on a weekly basis. And during the course of this video, if you hear something that you like, click the thumbs up or comment below. I love hearing from my viewers. I do try to respond to all of your comments. So let's get into today's video. Our great God is a dreamer. He created the heavens and the earth out of the desires of his infinite imagination. And this same God who created the world desires to create a prosperous future for his people. God created us in his image with the capacity to dream and imagine. In fact, he uses dreams, visions, and desires as a means to communicate his infinite plans to our finite minds. This allows us to see beyond our limitations by imagining the possibilities of the future that he has created for us. The word dream means the contemplation of doing something. A dream birth in the heart of an individual provides the idea and possibility of doing or being something greater. Dreams are powerful forces that can propel people forward toward greatness. But many of us face dreams that have been birthed in us that seem to have been put on a hold or are in a withered state. The Bible has many examples of dreams that have been delayed. But there's one in particular that I want to talk about today. But before I do, I want to set up the story a, a little bit better. The Bible has a very interesting way of describing people. Of course, there's the obvious by a person by their name, Noah, Moses, David. However, if these people were not the main character to a story within the Bible, they were described and defined in other ways. One is by location. So for example, Saul of Tarsus or the woman at the whale. They were also described by their association, James, the brother of Jesus, or they were also described by their condition, the woman with the issue of blood. And in the book of Luke, which is the scripture text that we're going to be coming from today, you have the man with the withered hand. I have heard many sermons on the preaching of the, about the man with the withered hand. And many of those came from the perspective of Jesus being set up by the religious leaders and the Pharisees. I haven't heard a lot of sermons that comes from the perspective of the man with the withered hand. You have to understand the story about the man with the withered hand only makes up the story for about a couple of verses. It, it's, it's not one of those long drawn out stories. And if you're not careful, you'll read right by it and not think anything of it. So I'll give you a quick synopsis. While Jesus was in the synagogue, he saw a man with a deformed or withered hand and miraculously healed him. The event was witnessed by opponents of Jesus, the religious scholars, and of course the Pharisees. So a withered hand is a hand that has been dried up through lack of sufficient nutrients to keep it alive. And during Bible days, there was no known remedy to restore it. But we also know you can't have a withered hand without other areas of your life and your body being impacted. I use the man with the withered hand because I can imagine that withered hand being a thorn in the man's flesh. Every time he looked at that hand, he saw a dream that had withered up and died. And I'm sure it's something that he sought remedies and wanted healing for. And I just wonder, is anybody else, when you've read this, have you ever put yourself in the position of the man with the withered hand? A withered hand that has been most likely the source of humiliation, gossip, and physical pain. Jesus asked the man to do something that almost feels humiliating. Jesus gives the command, stretch out your hand. And I am sure that that man was flooded with images and thoughts of a dream of getting Achille that had been denied so many times. And he wanted to believe, but I'm sure there was a slight hesitation. But Jesus speaks the word, stretch forth your hand. What I find ironic was that really the healing had already occurred before the man stretched out his hands. 
It was the man's faith that is a point to take note here. But Jesus speaks the word, stretch forth your hand. And the man obeyed and his hand became whole. How many of us come to church with our withered dreams, withered promises, withered understanding about who we are, a withered purpose, a lot of withered things. Those withered dreams can actually impact our view of God in our life. When all you can see is your pain, pain of a lost dream, you can lose sight of God. And if you're not careful, the pain of a withered dream can become your sanctuary. We become so used to accommodating our dried up places and things that we stop looking for the move of God in our situation. And just like the man with the withered hand, we may have things that we are dealing with that are painful and we want the Lord to fix it. Life can bring many failures and disappointments that wound us deep within. These disappointments, whether our own personal failures or the failures of others, can wither our souls. We can live with a feeling of emptiness and a lack of purpose for our lives. But what we need to know is that the same Jesus that healed the man with the withered hand can reach deep down inside of us and heal our withered souls and our withered dreams. As Jesus gave the man a new purpose for his life by giving him two functioning hands again, so he can do the same thing with our withered souls, our withered dreams, our withered promises. All Jesus did was simply give the word, stretch forth thine hand. Jesus is in the business of repairing withered hands. He's looking for people who are going to stand up and acknowledge that they are broken and their dreams have withered. People who are willing to stretch out and trust that he can fix what's broken. You may feel that you're in the season of a withered, dried up dream, a season of delay, but be encouraged that a withered dream can be restored. Just because your dream is postponed does not mean it's on track to not being fulfilled. It is important to remember that God is not bound to fill any dream other than the one that he has ordained. You cannot allow his timing to discourage you or allow a man-made dream to deceive you. King Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs, many are the plans of a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. When God gives us a dream, he's also revealing his purpose in our life. And this purpose and this dream may take longer than what you expected and lead you through situations that you've never anticipated. But in the end, God's purposes will always prevail and his dream for your life will come true. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Bye.